Thank you for the introduction. Um, so this is a joint work with Josef Malek and Martin Vohralík. So actually, uh, theory of a posteriori uh, error estimation is, is the key research topic of Martin Vohralík. So when he was asked by, by Josef to, to, to develop some estimates for non-Newtonian sto non Stokes flow, uh, he couldn't do that because he didn't have uh, higher order Raviarto masses, so he asked me. So that's how I get into this. So um, we would like uh, uh, to have uh, to have the estimate, which is uh, which is actually the, the, the which is the bound on the actual error and with, 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 no, with uh, no unknown constant. Um, on the other hand. Uh, Optimally, it, it should also be uh, uh, also bound from below on the actual error. Uh, of course, times some, con some constant, which is uh, computable. And uh, optimally lo locally. And uh, another property you like to have is that, uh, that the estim estimator really converges to the actual error with, uh, with refinement and other parameters. <coughs> so, okay, uh, the modal problem, of course, pass on. So, uh, so if we have, uh, if we have right hand side uh, which is square integ integrable, uh, we read from the equation that, uh, that uh, the flux gradient u is, uh, has square integrable divergence. Uh, but for, for conforming approximations, this is usually, this is usually not, not true. And this is, this is the, the key point that uh, trying to, of the lecture, trying to uh, um, reconstruct some, uh, some H diff flux for, from gradient UH. So, so why? Uh, so uh, assume that we have some conforming approximation and the, the flux uh, which, uh, which equilibrates with, with the right hand side. Okay, so then uh, uh, Prager single equality holds. Uh, so it's it's actually it's actually orthogonality. Uh, of course, it's Pythagorean theorem, uh, it's, which is equivalent to this color product being zero, which which is zero because uh, we integrate by parts. We get here divergence of sigma h, which is by assumption f, and the second guy. Uh, it's from the equation, it's also F here, so, so it holds. Okay. Uh, it's quite nice that uh, uh, we, we could drop this term. So we have, we have really estimate in terms of uh, known uh, variables. But uh, unfortunately, uh, this assumption, this is too strong. This, is, this, is, this can hardly be met. So the idea is, uh, okay, let's weaken this assumption and let's have only equilibration uh, uh, cell wise. Uh, then one can compute, uh, express uh, the norm using duality, uh, use the equation, add and subtract sigma h here, integrate by parts, it's similar like the proof before. And so now this could, this could be estimated because those terms, are sub, sub, each of them, are supposed to be, to be close to zero. So this can be estima estimated. And the trick is now that uh, uh, we split it uh, on, into, onto the cells, okay? And by the equilibration assumption, we can put here additional uh, average of this psi uh, because this is zero. We just added zero. So now just the Helder inequality 
and Poincare inequality because this is zero mean on each, uh, on each cell. This is Poincare constant on a cell. So here's uh, gradient Xi over cell, just uh, now just Minkowski inequality. And that's, that's the quantity which is one here from here. So we really have an estimate. So if we have such a sigma H, which equilibrates to the F, we can estimate the error in terms of uh, this residual, uh, residual estimator and flux estimator. In fact, this can be refined also to non-conforming approximations that there's some additional term, uh, st st estimating uh, controlling non-conformity, and uh, one needs also the additional reconstruction of, of, of UH to, to, to the space. So, okay, so this is nice, but uh, how to construct, uh, construct this sigma H? So, uh, so we would like to have equilibration, and we, we would like that sigma h is close to the flux, because if it is close, then the then the the, the estimate is uh, is good, uh, it's efficient, in some sense. So, uh, and we would like to do it locally, so that it's cheap. So uh, there there is some dual mesh approach, uh, uh, but we will stick to patchwise. So patch is uh, a set of cells uh, with fifth common vertex, A. Uh, so we will use partition of unity uh, with, uh, with head functions on, uh, supported on each uh, uh, patch. And so if we, if we decompose the uh, quantity we are looking for to, to do patches, so we would... Uh, when we require this property, optimally we would like to minimize, minimize this. But this is of course not possible when we localize these two patches, so, so we can minimize this. But this is, this is quite known thing. It's, we are minimizing, uh, minimizing this with some constraint here. So this is nothing, nothing but uh, uh, mixed uh, formulation of Laplacian. Okay? It's mixed Laplacian with some right hand, right -hand sides. Uh, And this, this is solved on each patch. <coughs> okay. Um, and uh, the, the total reconstructed flux is just the sum. Uh, this uh, Galerkin orthogonality, which, which is usually for many, many finite element solutions, uh, finite element approximations met uh, easily. Uh, so this is just a necessary condition for uh, for well postedness of uh, the of the Neumann problems, the interior patches where the problem problem is Neumann. It's, it's, it's hidden here in in, boundary, in those boundary conditions. <coughs> okay, so uh, this is nice, and uh, uh, for many PDEs, uh, one can prove that with such such a, a receipt to reconstruct the flux, uh, the error estimates based on this this flux uh, are are efficient, are locally efficient. Uh, but this is this is much more involved than than this presentation. Um, okay, so the point is now how how, how to implement this and. Uh, it's not easily done directly in Phoenix because Phoenix does not have abstraction for this because the patches are, are overlapping, right? So see, if I want to, to keep the, the, the problems on each patch uh, separated, not coupling them together by just summing, summing the equations, uh, it's, I have a bigger space than would be just, uh, just the, the space uh, uh, for mixed Laplacian for on, on the whole mesh, it's bigger space because there are overlaps between uh, patches. So that's a, that's a tricky thing. Uh, so um, 
there's some implementation. I plan to push it in a few days, hopefully, to my Bibucket account. And, uh, let's, let's show how it works. So, uh, okay, this is just plus some test case with some manufactured solutions so that we can, we can watch uh, uh, the actual error and both the estimator based on this. And this is how it converges. Uh, so we see that it really, there's really asymptotic convergence of the estimator to the actual error. It behaves quite nice. Uh, also, the implementation is scalable. Uh, that uh, the actual construction of the estimator of the error is really linear with a number of, of degrees of freedom of the original problem. Also, also for Stokes, it somehow works. It's now one that's here uh, for Taylor Hood, uh, the quadratic convergence. It also scales linearly. Okay. So. Uh, I would like, like to show now uh, how, how one can um, employ the estimator, just, 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 just give a brief, brief uh, idea how it could be used uh, for some adaptivity, or and how, one, how one can, uh, for instance, from the estimator, uh, estimate the different components of error, like uh, uh, the error in space, uh, the error in um, okay, uh, time, uh, linearization, and so on. So as take, just take P Laplace as a model problem. So it's weekly, it's, uh, this weak formulation of P Laplace. Uh, but uh, to solve it, uh, solve it using Galerkin approximation, one usually, usually needs some uh, regularization. So the regularization is that, that I, added, I added here some uh, positive epsilon to, to this, uh, to here. Uh, so that uh, Jacobian at uh, at zero is not is not um, singular. Okay. Um, so uh, let's just go a little bit a little bit back. That uh, when we were estimating the the Poisson problem, we were in fact estimating nothing more but uh, uh, but uh, the negative Sobolev norm of the residual. And this is the way how, how, it, how this framework of estimators can be uh, generalized to, uh, to other, other problems in, in, um, uh, in non-Hilbertian setting, in, in Banach spaces. So here's nothing more. Again, we would like to estimate this uh, negative Sobolev norm of the residue. Um, so we proceed totally in the same way like before. So we are here. We were here, in fact, it's the same, just, just a different exponents, p prime instead of twos. And now's the trick that uh, we just uh, add and subtract here uh, as epsilon. So, so that we get here as epsilon instead of s, and here's additional term, s minus s epsilon. So we can regard, we can con, uh, think about this uh, like uh, discretization error, uh, like before, and uh, this is uh, error introduced by regularization. Or okay, it's not actual error because this doesn't have meaning, but it's it's, it's like it's heuristic which tells you uh, where part of the error comes from somehow. So okay. And uh, let's fix the mesh, and let's solve uh, P Laplacian problem on it with different uh, regularization parameters. Let's start in at some big one and go to smaller ones. So one can one can see that uh, uh, one can control the regular uh, the, the amount of regularization needed to to being optimal uh, because uh, when when one uh, 
increases, uh, decreases uh, the epsilon. Regularization error uh, is now small enough so that uh, it plays no role. And you see that now would be the time for mesh refinement, for instance, if doing it in your adaptive algorithm. So OK. Uh, here are just some uh, list of references uh, for the sake of completeness. And uh, OK. I don't know. Okay, thanks. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Marie. Sorry. I'm sorry. Louder. I the, louder, please. Louder. Okay. So in your Stokes and Plasma test cases, your solution looks very smooth, and your yes, I know. Definitely, okay. definitely, you are right. Yes. I that some that some that that some uh, not not so smooth uh, uh, examples must needs to be tested. Yes, uh, with some with some reentrant corners or whatever. I think there is some evidence already in the literature, and uh, it needs to be tested now on this implementation, but I think so. Okay. Yes, uh, I believe there is, but uh, you know, in the most of the presentations, in most of the papers, it's. Uh, for, for brevity, because it's, it's, it's complicated enough. So, yeah, I think, I think it's possible. <laughs>